Five in three, two, one. I think we're live. It says we're about to begin, but instead I'm going to go to me. There's me. My name hey. is John Polnick. Uh, I am a bid nerd. You're going to be joining Michael Deeb here shortly. He, too, is a bid nerd. Uh, we Sorry. together are bid nerds. That's terribly exciting. Let's see if I can get the uh, thing to do its thing. Um, I'm having a hard time with the thing. Uh, boom. There it is. Look at that. Split screen. Hello. My name is there John Polnick. Right over there is Michael Deeb. We are the Bid Nerds. This is the daily uh, show where you can come and see us, a couple of would-be, wannabe, so-called experts, talk about our top five picks of the day on cars and bids and bring a trailer. We do claim to be experts and we do claim to know what we're talking about. However, we do not. So we are kind of idiots. Don't take our advice. We're yeah. just a couple of numbskulls. Yeah. We think we know it all. We encourage you not to listen. Yeah. If you're making any kind of uh, financial plans based on uh, this, uh, you are incredibly screwed. Um, speaking of screwed... I do believe, um, oh, hey, look at that. I was able to bring in a camera after the fact. I was a little worried that I did a technical error there that would have yeah. boned us pretty heavily. Uh, yeah. That is not the case. Um, so, yeah, let's uh, let's start by talking about yesterday's bids. We'll, oh, we'll yesterday very was quickly, a disaster. Which was yeah. an absolute disaster. We had yeah. no, uh, as proof to the fact that we don't yeah. know what we're talking about. Um <laughs> Well, I don't know. I, I shouldn't say that. I, we only reviewed four cars. Usually we do five. And yeah. one of the cars was a 2005 uh, Porsche 911 Carrera, which I oh. called perfectly, frankly. Um, oh, did you? I did, yes. I, I was uh, spot freaking on. Oh, um, let's see if my we can numbers, bring that car up. Yeah. My numbers were terrible yesterday. And, and again, we didn't do any prep work because we were trying to work out the format for... Uh, uh, Facebook and, and YouTube. So we didn't really do our typical homework. Um, the other thing that a little birdie told me is that we were pretty negative yesterday. We, shit on every car. <laughs> we did. We <laughs> shit on every yeah. single one. Uh, and this one yeah. in particular, I shit all over. Oh, yeah. It went, what totally. was your bid was like, uh, you had a pretty high I, bid. I was surprised. I, I, thought it, I thought it would break 40. I thought the low piles and the seal gray with the man up transmission would break 40 grand. And I don't think it did. Right. Isn't that what happened? Uh, yeah. So the, let's see here. The, didn't, it, didn't it sell for 36 and I bid like 44, 43 or something like that. The, uh, let's see here. Sorry, guys. I sure wish I had some kind of clue how to do this stuff. Uh, so the bid, let's see here. That car went for $35,000 and I bid Jeez. 34. Um, yeah. and I frankly didn't think it was worth 28. Uh, yeah, so, uh, we were off there. Uh, another car were, that we, no, you did good. That's, that, that's yours. was a great get. A great guess. I, I think yeah. I did pretty good on this next yeah. car too. Um, yeah. this is one of those cars where you and I constantly, like, this is the difference between like dealership values versus, uh, -huh. uh what actual values on the street are. Uh, yeah. you know, this SC, um, it bid for 35,000 as well. Right. Um, and this yeah, I, car, uh, I also thought that car would bring a lot more money. I thought it would be closer to 50. I think I bid high forties on that car. Yeah, and um, you know, and here's a car that uh, if it were at a dealership, I think it would be priced at somewhere in that fifty range because I think like Porsche dealerships yeah. are full of crack sometimes. Yeah, um, I, hmm. I, I second that emotion. I, I worked there once, <laughs> <laughs> having been a. Um, yeah, let's see here. <laughs> Gosh, what, what was the final? Look. What's what did that thing land at? That car landed at thirty five as well. So it's interesting. What was your bid? Uh, you, my you bid was forty. Uh, no, my bid was thirty five. I I was shocked. I was surprised. I mean, I was like, okay, look, it's an SC. Yeah. It should go for a little more than uh, thirty. Yeah. Um, but uh, frankly. Uh, you know, uh, bring a trailer yeah. is bringing higher numbers uh, yeah. than cars are really going for. And this one, you know, didn't. So it's it interesting was, that a 2005 and a 1980 SC, similar miles, similar condition, both uh, bid for exactly the same amount. Um, is that crazy? 
Yeah. yeah. And, bring, and, they were, and they both proved to be bring a trailer proof. In other words, the, the, the hysteria didn't uh, overinflate their value. Right. Um, so here's and another. Both, both well, those cars had a lot of bids, too. I would, I would assert that both those cars had like 20 bids when it was all yep. said and done. Yeah. Uh, the next oh. car was an E36 M3 that, uh, now, by, by, back to those 911s, we did, both yeah. did kind of shit over them, but not the SC. Yeah. The, the, the 997 we had problems with, but because it was in right. Florida and it probably smelled bad. Uh, here's a really nice convertible E36 M3. Um, right. This car... Uh, I, I bid 21 or 22 on that car. I thought it would break 20 grand because of the condition and, yeah. and where it was located. Um, you know, and cars and bids is a little softer than bring a trailer. I thought maybe it would break, uh, 20. Um, but I think I bid at 19 and it did not, uh, it only made 18, seven fifty. Yeah. So yeah. So your bid was great. And my bid was way too high, way too high. Uh, and here is the, uh, another E36 M3. This car was really nice. Um, yeah. now I, I'm going to, I'm going to fight you on this one because I went and this, this one shocked me so much. I think it, I think it sold for like 22 or 23. And I thought this car would bring 27, uh, which four grand maybe isn't that much money, but I, I went and I kind of researched the market on E36 M3 coupes and based on mileage and condition, this car was really well built and uh, really well bought. And I still think that that car is worth over twenty five thousand bucks, close to thirty grand, based on you can't find one that clean for that low miles. There are a few cars out there with forty thousand miles that are asking forty thousand dollars, and there's like I think one car's got nineteen thousand miles. Guy's asking sixty grand for it. Now it doesn't mean he's going to get that, but still, for seventy thousand miles, being well under a hundred thousand miles and the condition, I still think that car was stolen at twenty two, twenty three thousand dollars or whatever it hammered for. Uh, yeah, the official hammer price was, I accidentally clicked, yeah, $23,000. That really is an amazing car. So what do you think? I, mean, I think right. it's going to be interesting watching the prices this week because there is a lot going on in the world uh, that are going to potentially uh, either mildly or drastically affect the price. Now, we never get into politics on this show, right. but um, everyone knows that there are political things going on. There's weather. There's, right. uh, you know, uh, there's Corona. There's all that kind of silly stuff. So yeah. we, we, there are things that I think that, uh, oddly enough, in the last six months, we really, things that I would have thought would have affected the market have not. Yeah. And I'm wondering right. if this week is the first week that these things will actually start to affect this stuff. Um, I so it's, it's, it's entirely possible. So you've got, You've got half of a party uh, protesting the results of the election and, and a recount that is, you know, sort of in some ways underway. And then you've got, you know, an entire other party that is fighting that. And, and so there's there's some uh, obviously political unrest. Biden yeah. trying to put together a uh, cabinet and Trump is telling his supporters will continue well, hold to on, fight. Hold on, hold on. This is why we're never ever... I don't even want to mention yeah. any of those names. For the record, yeah. if you ever yeah. watch this show and you hear either of those names mentioned, just turn us off, yeah. right? We're not going to ever <laughs> mention those names. These things are not going to be talked about on the show. So we are right. setting a precedence. Never any of those names ever mentioned. Unless one of them... Yeah. Unless we happen to find one of their cars for sale and cars and bids and bring it to us. <laughs> um, or, so, or one of them or one of them lifts smog smog restrictions <laughs> on vintage cars across right. the country. They right. will sing their praises. And it doesn't matter we can we can talk <laughs> about politics if it directly result or relates to automotive yeah. values. Uh, yeah. But that said, um, yeah. so okay. Bottom line, lots of stuff going on. Uh, yeah. I think and, uh, and weather weather is another key one too. Even yeah. here in Northern yeah. California, it's been raining for two days straight. And, you know, you look out the window and the last thing you're thinking about is, is going out and enjoying your classic car. So, like, the summer season is officially over. You know, yeah. like, it's... it's well, so and there's also, like, literal lockdowns. So, yeah. um, some places you're... There's travel restrictions now. And I right. think those are very unclear. And people are going to have a lot of questions about those. Um, and we've picked a couple cars in a couple specific spots today. Um, I don't know if it was... I know one of the cars I picked was on purpose because of that. Um, yeah. Because, you know, there's 
travel restrictions in these places. So it's really going to be extra interesting. There's a lot right. of factors to be thinking about. So let's get to the cars. We talked about the cars that we were totally wrong about. Well, I was pretty yeah. right. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, but <laughs> uh, we're going we're gonna to get to the cars today. Our top five picks, cars and bids. Uh, and bring a trailer. Again, you're watching Bid Nerds, just so in case you... Oh, look, see, I added the logo down there. I forgot to add the logo earlier. Um, so what car do you want to talk about first, Mr. Michael Deeb? Uh, well, let's start Let's start at the shallow end of the pool. Uh, on Bring a Trailer, there's a 1993 Saab Story, a 900 turbo convertible with a manual oh. transmission. And this car is out of San Diego, California. It has about 137,000 miles on it. Um, these were little four bangers that were turbocharged. Uh, I must confess, in the late 90s, I dated a girl for about three years, and this was her daily driver. And, of course, uh, I drove that car all the time. Uh, it was black with tan interior. Um, torque steer. These are front-wheel drive and turbocharged. And when the turbo kicks in, uh, the drive wheels want to turn straight rather than stay uh, turned in, in a corner. So when you open the throttle and you're turning, the car wants to go forward and straight and not stay in a straight line. So you have to kind of hang onto the wheel with two hands. That's what we mean by torque steer. Uh, anyways, these cars, um, they're actually really fun to drive. It, 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 you know, it shook and scuttled and stuff like that. But being in San Francisco, which is a cold climate area, we had the top town all the time. We thought we were cool. And, uh, and we drove that car all over in California for years and, and I, I enjoyed driving the car it was fun to get on it and that turbo kicked in you were moving and uh and so they were popular so I'm sadly kind of pulled out of the north american market because not everybody agreed with my take on the car being fun to drive um and so it's interesting to see this car here probably kind of languishing because i feel like the generation that can only afford a car in this sort of price range we're at four thousand dollars with an hour and a half to go um don't have any real history with these cars and so i think they're kind of languishing in the market and they're really really soft uh so anyways with that being said jp what do you think you have old history with these cars Boy, I sure do. Um, I love these cars so much. Um, you're right about the torque steer thing, but that's like any hot hatch or any Volkswagen yeah. GTI or anything like that. Um, yeah. There's something, it, it's to me, when you drive one of these, it, they feel like if Mercedes made a front wheel drive car. Um, uh -huh. You know, it's like something about this era of Saab before they went to General Motors a couple years later after this one. I mean, this is right at the transition. Um, right. So this is like the, the 93 model is the last of the old school 900 series that feel right. like they took a block of steel, carved the car out out of it um yeah. there's something very 911 about the cockpit of one of these oddly enough mm -hmm. and it's because of that curved windshield the way it kind of like wraps around you i mean yeah. the swedes it's born from jets right uh yeah. you know the well, uh, there, there's, just, there's just a little tiny center console under the dashboard and so it's almost like while you're driving you can see both sets of feet like below you in front so i i when you talk about that 911 feel i i kind of agree with you on that yeah um, and it's just it was a fun car to have so once that top went out it was just the windshield in front of you. Yep. The entire car was open air. It's really neat. It's yeah, it's kind of got that fishbowl thing. It's there's another thing about these cars too, is that you know, you say that okay, they're they're languishing a little bit. And I think I, I think they're certainly undervalued, but they are absolutely coming up because this is a car I do really like and I have always loved, and they are uh -huh appreciating uh clean ones are next to impossible to find these have been dirt cheap forever um yeah. there is they are very popular in snow states these cars are absolute goats in the snow you would never think of it because they're just front wheel drive but one thing about the way the engine's sitting in there the engine it's a four cylinder and it's horizontally opposed i mean it's uh it's in line but it's at a slant like the engine is sitting like yeah, almost right. sideways, which right, allows right. it to go all the way down on the ground. The center of gravity on these cars is very low. The engine yeah. is very far back to the firewall. So it has that kind of like mid engine almost feel because that engine is so low and so far back. And that just puts all the traction on those front drive wheels and they will climb up almost anything. Uh, right. My wife had one in the snow for, uh, not in the snow, but she had one in Washington state for years and we absolutely loved it when it snowed. Um, um, 
Another thing uh, about these cars is that they are unbelievably reliable. This is a yeah. 200, 300,000 mile car. Yeah, you might have to replace the turbos yeah. or something like that, but or turbo. Yeah. Uh, but it is, yeah. I, I bought one back in the 90s. It was an 88 900 uh, turbo. Yeah. I bought one with 130,000 miles on it from a stripper. She was the original owner. The car, the clutch was burned out, right? So it wouldn't even move. Yeah. It barely right. ran. I took it to the mechanic. The mechanic calls me back and goes, um, this car has the original oil in it. <laughs> this is the original oh clutch. My she had God. never done any maintenance at all yeah. in the, right. you know, eight, five years that she had owned it and 130,000 miles. And all the mechanic did was the maintenance and the car yeah. ran like it was brand and, new. It was fantastic. And vacuumed all the glitter out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I still find glitter uh, to this Here, day. Here's, here's one for you, Jamie, because I'm yeah. in Seattle where you grew up and San Francisco where I grew up. Probably not too dissimilar. Um, the girl I dated uh, lived in a city, and uh, regularly those side papers were there in the front quarters, those little orange uh, reflectors, uh -huh. um, they would get stolen. And uh, it was what we always felt it was the sort of um, – of the import thing, kids that uh, drove import cars would take those off and put them on their uh, Japanese cars, ah. and uh, and they would get they would get stolen regularly off her car in San Francisco. I don't know if you guys had that in Seattle. <laughs> well, I don't that recall that. Over in three in three years, I think we replaced those things like four times, and they would you know because wow. you just go take a, you, you could take your key and just pop them off the side of the car. And uh, <laughs> I've never and had then, that problem. That's some, interesting. I've never yeah, had a new problem. Yeah. All right, so what's your bid? Uh, that being said, the car's at four grand. There's an hour and a half to go. 137,000 miles. I think it's a great car. I think it's a tremendous value for the money. Uh, I do agree. The, the car is really reliable, and you can drive it and, and have fun. This would be a great commuter car for a kid going to high school. Um, that being said, I don't think the car is going to break ten grand. I'm going to go $7,500, and that's my bid. All right. Um, yeah, I think that's a pretty strong bid. It's I mean, a, this, it's a yeah. no reserve out of San Diego, too, by the way. Yeah, so I mean, that's the right place for it to be. It's in the right weather. Yeah. It's in the right... I mean, somebody there wants that car. Um, yeah, I mean, I, the, when I say they're coming up, I don't mean that they're coming up like, oh my gosh, people have to have these, but you know, this is a car you could have bought for 2,500 bucks a few yeah. years ago. Uh, and now I'd be surprised if you get it for under, you know, six or seven. Uh, I think your bid is actually right on since I'm so strong on them and like them. I'm going to hope that somebody goes really strong and goes 8,000 on it. Yeah. Um, nice. So that's where I, let's, you know, if it broke 10, boy, that would be really, really cool. Uh, let's move on to the next car. You want to go over to Cars and Bids and see that yeah. BMW? Yeah, let's go look at this car. This is in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, uh. JP, JP has picked out a, a 2016 BMW toaster. I mean, I'm sorry, it's an i8, uh, which is their exotic toaster. Uh, it's Giga Ivory White, whatever that means. Uh, this car or automobile has 33,000 miles on it. Um, it's interesting. I, I, I really don't know anything about these cars. Uh, I have come to learn while studying uh, that it is a 1.5 liter inline three um, that drives the rear wheels. And then you've got an electric motor that drives the front for a combined 300 and let's call it 60 horsepower and 420 yeah, yeah, 357, and then 420 pound-foot of torque uh, driven by a six-speed automatic transmission. Um, you know, just looking at the numbers, this car by time is coming out of warranty, and I don't know that I'd want to own anything this uh, complex without some sort of extended warranty. I, I think if you were in the market for one of these, you'd have to strongly consider buying a, a CPA from a BMW dealer rather than saving a few bucks and buying one off of cars and bids. But that's just me. I, I this A car like this come, would scare the hell out of me if it wasn't covered by some sort of warranty. And there is no mention that there's any extended warranty on this car. So buyer beware. Um, here we go. Shit all over a car again. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, I just... I... I, I don't think I could agree with you more. I mean, that is just <laughs> what a what a pile of problem that you're just getting into. I mean, I think it was an interesting idea because right at the time you had what the LaFerrari, the yeah. the Porsche 918, uh, you had all the Acura, all these all these hybrids were the thing. And I think BMW it was weird that BMW says, oh, you know, we'll make one that that that's more affordable. And by more affordable, they mean like under two hundred. Um, yeah. But okay, someone that's spending one hundred fifty to two hundred thousand dollars does not want a car that has three hundred. 
50 horsepower, 360 right. horsepower. They want a car that has a gajillion. And, and this car has the eyeball. This car kind of reminds me of like a an air-cooled RWB car. Or this, you know, some right. asshole that has right. uh, a 993 or whatever and, and calls Nakaya San to come and smoke some cigarettes, put all this shit on his car, and the car doesn't have any horsepower to back up the look. It's a, it's a, it, that's a great analogy, by the way. This is a head-turning silhouette no matter where you are. If one of these cars drives by, yeah. you, your, your, your eye will recognize that is something supercar, something exotic. And then you turn and you see all of these like blue anodized trim pieces <sighs> and, uh, and, and wheels that are super skinny. And you're like, oh, it's one of those fucking BMW i8s. Yeah. Who gives a shit? It's yeah. crazy to me that the silhouette of this car is so striking. And then the closer you get to it and the more you drink in all of these details, the uglier this car becomes. I could not uh, detest a car more than the i8. It's just awful. I, I, I don't give a shit about this car. Um, the funniest thing, the most alluring or attractive thing to this car, to me, is when you go online and you look at videos of fat owners trying to get out of one of these things. Have you ever seen that? Have you ever seen that? There are a number of videos of oversized, we're talking 250 to 300 pound plus uh, males that cannot get across this like 16 inch wide threshold between the uh, outer edge of the driver's seat and the outer of the car. And these guys open up scissors and literally get their body weight over the threshold and under the steering wheel to exit the vehicle. And at Cars and Coffee, number of kids have captured this on video and put it on the internet and it is fucking still. These cars do attract the douchiest of owners. Uh, at When we had Durst Studio in downtown Vegas, I had one of these guys park in my little parking lot. He took two spots. He didn't, like, go in two spots and split it. He went long ways and blocked my car in. I had my 911 in. And I, if you go to uh, Derfascination, uh, the, the, the YouTube channel, you can see the video. I, like, went out and confronted oh, the guy. I'm God. like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, yeah. So, yeah, not a, not a big Listen. fan. What's your bid? My first job in the car business was at a Mercedes <laughs> dealership. And regularly, like once a month, a guy, we had one little lane into our parking lot in San Rafael. And once a month, a guy in a BMW would park and block that entrance and exit to the thing. And all the guys on the dealership floor would say to me that it's always a BMW owner that like beaches his car and blocks the entire flow of the business. Yeah. And, and nothing could be more true. Even at the Dur studio that, that came true. Uh, I, I don't get the, I couldn't tell you what this car is worth. What's it at? Uh, what's sitting, it sitting at right now? Two hours ago, it was at $50,000. I'm I sorry. You, you cut off there, buddy. Okay, so uh, with two hours to go, out of Jackson, out of Jacksonville, Florida, this car is sitting at fifty thousand dollars, and um, I had to look up and see what these cars were. They were one hundred and fifty grand brand new before dealer markups. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, does this car bring sixty five thousand bucks? I, I, I'm not that seems that to be the it. going rate for them is somewhere in that sixties yeah. range. Did you catch the miles? I missed it. Uh, yeah, it's thirty three thousand. Yeah. All right. So it's got low. I mean, I guess low miles. I mean, it's yeah. If whatever. I mean, it's from Florida. There's just nothing going for this thing. Um, right. Every strike is against it. Uh, so yeah. I mean, if it's at fifty now, I say it gets to fifty three. I don't know what you did already. Under, well, I I, I put sixty five thousand with a question mark, and I just don't okay. feel that strong about it. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna bet sixty grand. I'll bet over you. Uh, okay. But I just don't think this car anywhere so i mean it's basically someone's gonna buy it at book because it's a new enough car and someone's someone's just gonna be like all right what's the book value i mean it's a carmax right. bid. what would carmax right. give you is what this car is worth um and where and, and where's the reserve set for this guy like what does this guy think his car is worth yeah is that's that's the big yeah joy. does it does it go it's to uh, yeah is that a reserve at seventy thousand bucks and he's not gonna come near that i mean that's Bananas to me. All right, it's let's move weird, on from this hunk of, hunk of shit. Okay. Let's uh, let's All go right. back to uh, bring a trailer and talk about this little black and orange number. Okay, black and orange. All right, so this is an interesting car. So we, we talked about how we shit on cars yesterday. Um, <laughs> on bring a trailer, we're looking at a 2007 Porsche 911 GT3 RS, a car, a model that I could not love more. However. This particular example is a car I'm going to shit all over. It is very, inter very interesting to me in that 
this guy put a, a full roll cage in the car. He put a um, speed shifter, a sequential shifter uh, in the gearbox. He changed some things in the suspension, and he's already repainted the front of the car because of stone chips. There are some pretty good photos underneath the car, and it looks like this car was driven wet and put away wet. Um, it just looks like it's going to start to corrode underneath the car in uh, Dayton, Ohio, I might add. Um, I think this car has been driven hard. I don't think this car has been cared for or loved. I think this guy getting off it has over um, And there's not a merit of this. It is stunning to me that 997 GT3 RSs are so soft in the secondary market, especially these top ones. You can pick up a nice dot one for one hundred and twenty to one hundred thirty thousand uh, dollars, which I love all day long. It's a fantastic car, uh, great Metzger engine and driving experience, great analog. But this particular car, I think, is the language. I think it barely breaks one hundred thousand um, dollars, and I would not touch it with a ten foot pole. There are much nicer cars out there for a little more money, and I would stay far away from this particular example because I think it's just been beat. Wow, a sequential? A sequential shifter. That is... All the stock parts are included with the car, which you have to put back. But this guy's never going to get the 120 or 130 he thinks his car is worth until he puts it back and stops and cleans up the underside of this car. But this, this car is in big trouble. It's not going anywhere. Uh, what's the bid at right now? So it's at $92,500 with three and a half hours to go. And again, I think this car... in good condition should bring $130,000, yeah. if not a little bit more. But well, this, this is, the, this is yeah. certainly one of those cars that I think is going to be potentially affected by uh, external factors above and beyond it's the car's actual problems. Um, in, in an Ohio? Is that what yeah, because Ohio yeah. has a bunch of snow right now. Right. Um, you know, they are going into heavy lockdown from my understanding. Yeah. Uh, so if you do decide to get this car, unless you live in Ohio, um, I don't know how you take possession of this thing. You know, right. some one of the part of the big appeal, I think, to for enthusiasts in enthusiast type cars, you find something like this under cars and bids or bring a trailer. You, you go through the excitement and drama of buying the car. Uh, then you get on a plane and you go get it uh, and, you know, and, and drive it home no matter how far away it is. There are some people that ship the cars. If it's a really special car, that's something that happens. And maybe this is a car that somebody just does that. Um, but I'm buying something like this. I want to go get the thing and drive it home. I want to have that right. couple of days, three days, whatever, that experience of like yeah. getting to know it and you know right. having this adventure. And right now, this time of year, that's just not something... Uh, you know, I'm not going to Ohio and driving a car back to Vegas. There's, all, there's, no, yeah. there's literally a thousand miles of really inclement weather uh, yeah. aside from all the other stuff going on that are going to be problems. I'm pretty sure those rear wheels are 12 and a half inches wide. Sitting yeah. on like 335 spec uh, tires. Yeah. That, that car, that sequential car shifter like, in the snow. Not so much. Yeah. <laughs> that car doesn't even like, that car doesn't even like fog, let alone snow, rain and hail. Yeah. The hell with that. That car has to be enclosed. And right now <laughs> to punch a hole into Ohio in an enclosed trailer to go get your car. The rates are nearly double. This is yeah. the worst time of yeah. the year to buy that car. Yeah. He waited too long to sell it. And, uh, and it's just, it's just a really beat up example. So I don't, well, I, as much as I love the model, I don't believe in that car. Can, you know, and there's something to be said about waiting too long. And, you know, that's something I, I think we should do a video about how to sell your car on cars and bids and bring a trailer. Because you, things that people don't really factor in is that it's not like uh, Craigslist or, you know, OfferUp or something like that where you pay the money, upload some pictures, and your car's for sale. Right. You know, with right. cars and with, with bring a trailer, they're pumping so many cars through that site. How many did you say? 50 yeah, or 60? 60 to 70 now. Now that uh, Hearst Media buy them, they're sixty to seventy. They, they're yeah. they're accepting anything. They're they're selling they're selling canoes for fuck's sake. These yeah. whores are going to sell to anything that you petition to them right now. It, whatever, it's crazy. And, and but gonna, here's the thing: the is that brand. you you send them your stuff. You're in a queue for a month. It takes at nope. least a month to get oh, your car. No. That's What's that or two? Yeah. yeah, it's it's a long wait right now. It's six weeks, uh, I think. Um, it's four, it's a month if you got an account with them and you're rolling through. Uh, yeah. But if you or I tried to go on Brick a Trailer right now, I wouldn't be surprised if we were in a two month queue. 
Yeah, so you have a convertible. It's fall time. Everything's nice out. You're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna sell my, you know, so someone can really enjoy the 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 fall, right. you know, ch- color change and all that stuff. And you go to put it on Bring a Trailer, and now your car's selling in the middle of November, just before Thanksgiving, yeah. when all the storms are coming. Yeah, post election. Yeah, yeah post election. All the things, right? Uh, you know, when now, so cars and bids, far fewer cars go through there, but you're still looking at least a, a week of gestation time, right. uh, for right. them. You that, submit your car, uh, you they can, write but, the ad and then put it up. But you can budget for that. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so there are some drastic differences between the two, uh, the two auction sites and there are other auction options, but you know, we don't like any right. of them. So, uh, right. let's, uh, let's yeah. move on to that, the next car. Well, what's your bid? What's your bid on that? Oh, we didn't do a bid. I'm sorry. What was your, you said? You, you didn't think it's so going to break a hundred. I don't think it's going to break 110. I think that car might break a hundred, but I don't think I'm going to go 108 and say it doesn't sell. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't think it sells. I'm sure this guy thinks it's worth 130. I'm sure this is one of those guys that thinks, oh, he put all this money into mods and right. he's going to get that money back. And we exactly. all know that ain't the case. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think it, I think anybody watching this auction knows it. Is there a lot of auction volume on this one? Oh, well, that's a good question. Let me look real quick. Uh, boom, 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 boom. There are 14 bits. That's yeah, that's pretty low. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there's 16,000 views and 11, almost 1,200 watchers. Yeah. But there's 14 bids. Um, I don't know. It, what was your bid? Like 110? 108, 106, like that, and no six that price. Yeah, okay. Well, what's your number then? 108? 108, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say 105. I'm just, I mean, I, I'm right there with you. I think it just people are going to be like, meh, whatever. I don't want to go in the snow. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's move on. Let's go to something yeah. more fun. How about yeah. a, a little okay. black Italian number? Okay, well, all right, let's let's do that. The black Italian number. So uh, this is the car today that I I really like. Um, the, uh, how do I explain? What it? is it? <coughs> Excuse me. 1976 Ferrari 308 GTB. Um, the first 800 Ferrari 308s that Pininfarina made, not the GT4 Dino, but the Pininfarina Magnum PI looking car. Um, Ferrari built these cars, or I should say Pitt and Farina built these cars out of fiberglass. And it saved Ferrari about 330 to 350 pounds of weight on the car until they almost immediately switched over to steel bodies and the cars remained steel bodies until, I don't know, however many years ago they started building the cars out of aluminum. Um, for years, these cars were had no premium on them because the, the gist of it is this. The fiberglass was so thin to shave weight that if you drove the car at all, that fiberglass would flex under cornering, the flex under wind, and your paint would eventually crack. So almost every 308 fiberglass car that's out there has been repainted once or twice. It's inevitable. Um, So I think for years these cars suffered because the paint was always cracking on them and nobody wanted to bother with the repaint. Today, there is a pretty large premium to pay for the fiberglass cars because there is a massive performance gain in the weight savings. Um, That being said, the hype for these cars was definitely about four years ago when they were bringing $250,000 to $300,000. Those days are over. The market has softened more than 40, 50% on these cars, and they've come way, way down in value. And so now you're looking at a car. Uh, this one's a really nice driver example with about 35,000 miles. It's had a few previous owners. The car did live in the country of Mexico for a short while. But mm. Bill Noon, who's a reputable guy at a Symbolic Motor Cars in San Diego, California, I think he brought this car in and they kind of went through, refurbished and resurfaced the car. And uh, and they are presenting it as uh, one of their cars out of their collection, which is really, really nice. Uh, it does have a 2B exhaust, but otherwise is largely stock, including the correct 14 by seven and a half inch wide magnesium Campagnola wheels with um, uh, the Michelin period correct XWX tires. So this is a car you could probably take to a Concours uh, and do really well in. Um, that being said, it'd be a fun car to drive on the weekends as well, especially if you're in um, you know, San Diego. So there it sits at $100,000 with about an hour to go. Um, these cars have come way down in value. The question is how far? Uh, yeah, boy, that is a good question. I mean, it, uh, it sure sounds to me, and now I don't know much about these, 
Um, but it sure sounds to me like this has got to be one of the more fun classic Ferraris to drive of all time. I mean, I can't yeah. imagine uh, how that that weight savings has got to translate to smiles in a big way, right? Yeah. So what happens with, with these cars, JP, um, the throttle becomes more sensitive because you're yeah. just pushing around a lot more weight. The reality is the the Pin and Farina 308s, the Magnum PI 308s, were not great handling cars. Despite a short wheelbase and a mid-engine, that motor sits really high in the chassis. Uh, the geometry for the, ch- the the suspension was never great, and these cars just don't handle. Uh, a 308 with 240 horsepower versus a similar, say, 76, say 160 to 180 horsepower 911 from ERA, a 911 would walk away from this car on a back road because they handle so much better. The mm-hmm. 308s didn't. Now, the 308's earlier cousin, the 308 GT4 Dino, was a mid-engine that also had a longer wheelbase because of a small back seat. That car was do- designed by Bertoni. And the geometry and the suspension on the 308 GT4 Dino, those cars handle really, really well. But they're not as pretty as these cars. And they have languished in the secondary market for decades because everybody thought they were the redheaded stepchild of the Ferrari lineup between the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Um, but those cars are being recognized now as great handling cars, and people are starting to snap those up, the good ones. What's, uh, going, on, car- what's going on in this ad? I was just showing people uh, down in the bottom of the pictures. There's a picture of a bunch of other ones that are different colors. What What is happening in this ad on that? What is that about? Yeah, let's see here. Are they um, just showing pictures of what this car, what other ones look like? I mean, that just doesn't make any sense. I, I Stuff like I, this I, drives so, the fucking yeah, nuts I, I when, it, when it's looking, when you're... When you're trying to figure out, you know, right. uh, when you're trying to buy a car and then you come down and you find all these weird pictures in an ad, it's like, what the hell well, this is this? Is, it's okay, a race so car. This is, this is a great segue because you know how you were just saying uh, selling a car on here isn't like throwing an ad up on Craigslist or eBay. You yeah. have to do a, you have to go a little bit further with the uh, transparency and you got to make the car look, as you and I would say, you've got to make it look sexy and do really good marketing both with, with either film, uh, but definitely with photography. So... What's interesting here is I think Bill Noon is uh, showing a few other cars that his business has sold over the years to let people know he knows what he's talking about with regards to Ferraris, which is silly to me because Bill Noon has sold some really amazing Ferraris over the years. Um, He sold some historically important cars. But there is some video that comes with this car, and the video is terrible. I don't know who did it, but it looks like a grade school project. It's literally staying on the side of the road on a dusty road where this 308 is driving by at moderate speed, kicking up dust, and it doesn't really do anything to show us the dynamic of the car. I, I just, I could not agree with you more that, that if you're going to bother to do it on here, you've got to either invest the time to learn how to do it or invest in somebody to do it right for you. And this this car and these other photos are a perfect example of how not to do it. Yeah, man, make it easier for people, not harder. There, I, I got... On on cars and bids uh, the other day, uh, there was a car that sold that we we actually talked about. It, it was that uh, 500 SE SEL Mercedes yeah. that was sitting up in Vancouver, right. uh, and you know the buyer when he listed the car, there were multiple questions. People asking, "How do I get this thing across the border?" Right, yeah. and you know I just kind of I wasn't going to comment on it until after the end of the bid because you know I I just kept seeing the seller's answer over and over oh you know basically figure it out on your own was his answer he nicely yeah. said you know um, and then so I, when that car uh, failed to sell um, you know and it, it I mean it barely it, it was a car that we we both thought should have broken ten and I don't think it got a you know barely got above five and it was because. The guy limited his buyers to people in Vancouver, BC. How many people in Vancouver, BC want that car? And I yeah. commented when the after the auction was ended and the car failed to sell, I said this car would have would have sold and probably at a premium had the seller gone through the effort of learning how to make it happen, get this car across the border and be able to answer that question. And I got shit on. People were angry. It was like, and the, you know, people were like quoting uh, cars and bids um, rules. It's the buyer's responsibility. To buy. It's like, well, yeah, it's the buyer's responsibility. Of course it's the buyer's responsibility. But if the seller wants to sell the damn car, make it easier, not harder. Right. That's the rule, yeah. right? That's that's the seller's responsibility yeah. is to make it make it possible to acquire the car. If yes. you don't do that, you've got no chance. And, yep. and these, 
these new forums uh, uh, that are online, that are auction places, uh, it, the, the buyers or the prospects get to uh, you know, engage with the seller and it's the seller's responsibility to engage back or, or the car will just get left behind. And that's yeah. what happened with that car. And the proof that was in the pudding. The car didn't yeah. sell. And it was a nice you know? car. And, and it was, was a, a nice car. I wanted that car. I was like, man, this is this. Is, I would love to have this thing, but I don't want to deal with that. Or right. maybe I would deal with that if the guy had, here's a shipper, he's quoted this much, uh, and call this number as soon as you buy it, it's going to be super easy. Okay, boom, done. Moving on. So, uh, all right, back to this uh, this Ferrari. What's your bid? Well, so I think this would have been a hundred and seventy-five to two hundred thousand dollar car three, four years ago. Anyway, uh, I don't even think it's a hundred twenty-five thousand dollar car today. So I'm going to go. Wow. I think I'm going to go one hundred eighteen thousand dollars on this car. Okay. You know, I have to take your word for it because I really don't know. I, you know, I know about yep. the red one that you kind of had um, some yep. access to a while ago, um, and I remember right. you saying that they were worth much higher. So when I saw this, I was like, "Whoa, is this a two hundred thousand dollar car? Is it two hundred fifty thousand dollar car?" I wasn't aware how over, soft they are over now. Two and a half years ago, we bought at Garden. We bought the very first uh, glass that came into the country. It had been repainted, but it was all original. 12,000 miles on it, and it was spectacular. The car was yeah. fantastic. And we bought it right, and I thought we were going to sell it and make 50 grand on that car. And the market was just, it was like a melting ice cream cup in the sun. It was just going down and down and down and down. Um, and then while I'm taking that car back auction, I'm losing money on it. So I, yeah. I could not be, I could not have be more heartbroken because I think these, um, these will have their time again in the uh, marketplace. Look, when, when it comes to these sort of vintage sports cars, production numbers and, and condition and provenance rule the day. And they only made 800 of these for the world, and only about 100 of them came to the United States. So if this is a real U.S. car, which this one is, I think this car should be worth $200,000, $250,000 when the market is strong. But the market is soft, and it's particularly hitting this model hard. So yeah. there you go. All right, so the guy probably thinks it's worth a lot more. Not going to hit reserve. Uh, I'm going to say it gets up to 125 just because, That's a good guess. but no yeah, sell. You might, yeah. yeah, you might, and you might be there. I mean, the reserve yeah. might be 125, 130. Uh, but I just think you know this car being in Mexico and having a little bit of work done, some miles, maybe, maybe it doesn't hit there. It, the market's right. been really soft. All Can right, guess last on my one. part. Let's move yeah. on. Yeah, here we go. So staying on Bring a Trailer out of uh, Xenia, Ohio. Here's another mm, Ohio. 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 Uh, I feel like when I did this for another ad, uh, here's a 2009 black Aston Martin DBS coupe with a 60 manual. This is James Bond, Daniel Craig's car, manual transmission. Super cool car, 510 horsepower, 420 pound foot of torque. That is a strong motor, which will help move some of that heft around. Car only has 20,000 miles on it, but that 5.9 liter of 12 uh, paired with a manual transmission has got to be a really fun car to drive. But you and I did this like just a couple weeks ago where we looked at a, an Aston that we thought was being sold quickly out of uh, sort of the snow belt. And uh, the guy was trying to get off the car uh, as quickly as he could because he didn't want to pay the insurance or the storage on for another year while he didn't drive it for six months. Uh, and I think that's the same thing here. I think this guy would be thrilled to get rid of this car. It's sitting at $100,000. Um, I believe the cars were 200 and something new. I think I wrote huh. it down. Uh, I didn't write it down. But it's, um, you know, I think these cars were, were $225,000 when brand new. Uh, so at $100,000, um, 11-year-old car, out of warranty, you know, what's it to you? Jeez, Louise. Um, man, I mean, look at that interior. It's like every gauge on this thing is a Rolex watch. I mean, it, it's you, beautiful. This has got to be one of the prettiest cars on the planet. Um, the stitching, the, the the quality of all of the accoutrement is just. Right. Yeah. It's just, man, uh, wonderful cars. But for some reason, Aston Martins depreciate as bad or worse than Audis. I mean, right. you look at the Vantage market right now, and you know, early yeah. Vantages are in, are, can be in the twenties, can be had in the twenties. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and most of them are barely making thirty something. So right. this car, and you know, I, 
Talk about terrifying. You know, you talked about the BMW i8 having uh, being a little bit scary to be out of warranty. I don't know, man. I'd way rather have the BMW i8 from a reliability point of view than a Aston Martin with 12 cylinders of right. potential terrifying problems. Now, yeah. that's me. I'm a normal person. There's a guy right. out there that has a garage with 50 other amazing cars um, mm. that's like, yeah, you know what? I want to drive, uh, I want a really beautiful, one of the most beautiful cars in the world to have right. in my garage that I can drive twice a year. All right. Yeah. This is that. If you want to be James Bond, hey, there's going to be, you know, we got to go down to the casino night at the, uh, at the country club. I'm going to bring my, you know, casino Royale car. That makes yeah. sense. Um, but <laughs> JP, this car was two hundred and sixty-seven thousand oh, eight hundred and ninety-five dollars when it was brand new in two thousand nine uh, from Miller Motor Cars back east. Uh, the MSRP, the, the Monroni, is in the ad. So yeah, that's that's a it, this this car is depreciated like a stone. And you know, twenty thousand miles, it's barely broken in. Uh, the car looks to be in excellent condition. Uh, I mean, it, this car is going to sell be transported, paid tax on, and you can put an extended warranty on it and it'll still be less than 50% of its original value. Yeah. It's great. Oof, man, but uh, but you are going to look great and feel good while you're sitting in this car uh, and you're going, I mean, wow. If you are an unattractive man uh, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. you are like, you know what? I really need a gold digger, but you don't go have the budget for to, for a gold. If you're just not that, uh, you know, attractive, uh, you're not attractive and you're not super rich, but you, you can get financing on this car and you want to get those gold digger type chicks, go buy yeah. this car, you know, park it out in front of the, uh, the club and stand by it. And maybe J that's going to work out for you. J JP, pull up the, <laughs> pull up the photos again and go to uh, photo 58 out of 116. Uh, I can't really see the numbers on here, but what pic uh, what's the picture of? Uh, it's a picture of the crystal key. So if you go to the interior, uh, there's a great close-up of the clock and the shifter in the foreground. And the next one, it looks like the Aston Martin logo. And it's, a, it's the crystal-backed key that comes with the car. Uh, mm. another, another incredible feature on these. I mean, talk about the opulence and, and the luxury and that uh, it's very status-oriented. Really, it just neat stuff. I mean... Super James Bond. Well, all right. So it's sitting at what is it sitting at a hundred thousand exactly? How yep. much volume? How much action is this car seeing? Is anybody bidding What's, on it? Eighteen bids with 18 an hour bids. to go. Yeah. Um, all right. So some people are kind of looking at this thing. What's your bid? There's definitely people circling. Um, I still think these cars are incredibly soft. It's it's really weird. I I wish they brought more money. They they seem like they should deserve to bring more money. Um, I don't know them to be horribly temperamental. They're not quite as bad as like a, a Range Rover. Uh, but that being said, they're definitely not as reliable as a Porsche or even a Ferrari, if that makes any sense to you at all, which is crazy. Ooh. The Ferraris of this era are much more reliable cars. Um, so that being said, sitting in Ohio, the guy's trying to get off it. It's at $100,000. I think this car brings 116. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, 120. Um, and do you think it sells? At that? That's a really good question. That I I don't know. I it, it could it might this guy might know he's just yeah. I mean, you, you can't be that crazy. Uh, I mean, yeah. and the thing is, the uh, bring a trailer is very aggressive on their on their reserves. They're not going to let you have a really high reserve. So no, 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 so no. you're at one sixteen. I'm at one twenty. Yeah, and what and I I say it does sell. I'm surprised. Yeah, I think but, you're but right. It, we we opened with this this weird climate that we're in, both yeah. uh, meteorologically and politically, and everything else that's going on in the world. I think this guy wants out from underneath this car. I think it does sell at 116, 120,000. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. I mean, frankly, I'm shocked it's at 100 already, to be perfectly yeah. honest. So right. that bodes well for the car, uh, despite yeah. all its things. All right. Well, there it is. I mean, you're watching us. Uh, you're either watching us on Facebook um, down there. There's our Facebook address. If you're watching us on YouTube, hey. you can find us on Facebook. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, go ahead and uh, hit subscribe and Please. like. Share this video uh, on your socials. You can go find us on uh, Facebook and uh, share us there as well and comment. Uh, tell us about cars that you want. I mean, if there's a car that's coming up on an auction later in the week or next week, yeah. let us know. We'll talk about it. Um, yeah. If it's your car, we'll talk about it. Um, hopefully, yeah. we won't shit all over it like we do some cars. Uh, but oh, um, we, we will. We will. We will. Um, <laughs> you can also find us over at... 
Bid Nerds at uh, or at Bid Nerds on the Instagrams uh, and find us there and uh, talk to us there. We're gonna start doing. Uh, we're gonna do these every day at nine o'clock. You're watching us on um, YouTube or Facebook. We're gonna add some other uh, channels as well. We'll probably be on Twitch uh, and maybe go live in a few other places. But right now it's YouTube and Facebook. Um, we really do appreciate you watching. Uh, again, subscribe, like, share. Uh, we're just starting out, so we got to get the word out there. Uh, uh, there's a couple of yahoos giving her terrible, terrible advice about what cars are worth on cars and bids and bring a trailer. Um, so again, we really do appreciate you watching. Um, stick around. Uh, come back tomorrow at 9 o'clock in the morning and we'll do it again. And also yep. look out for, we're going to do some live streams throughout the days every now and then. If there's a specific car that we think is going to have a lot of action, uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and up. let you know and we'll jump it and we'll watch the auction and we'll watch the drama with you live as the car uh, finishes its bids. Um, also, We'd sure like you to comment about what our bids are on these cars, and we'd like to hear yeah. what you think the bids are going to be uh, right. on cars that are coming up. See if you are better at this than we are. Chances are you probably are, but we want you to prove <laughs> it. Um, so again, yeah. thanks for watching Bid Nerds. Michael D., anything else to say before we check out? No, 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 no. Like, subscribe on YouTube. That's uh, that's where we're at. All right, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching.